Hello and welcome to a quick video for AP Human Geography, drawn by Ria Sembi and voiced by me, Andrew Boyer. Here we will be describing the three main types of urban models and the meanings behind them. Here are some important terms to keep in mind. The CBD or Central Business District is the focal point for business and commercial services to cluster in and many cities revolve around this district. An edge city is a smaller city on the edge of a large city where services have clustered. A business service is a service that only provides to a business and typically clusters near the CBD. The first model we will begin with is the concentric circle or zone model created in 1923 by sociologist E.W. Burgess. In this model, a city is constructed like a series of concentric circles, meaning they build on around each other from a central circle. The focal point of this model is the CBD, where the bulk of the jobs are provided to the areas surrounding. The first zone outside the CBD is the transition zone, composed of a mix between poor housing and business usually very unpredictable in its layout. The largest concentration of population is here. High crime rates and poverty are here also due to population, as well as a high number of immigrants. Building from that is the zone of independent workers' homes. Here one will find modest, older homes and apartments. You will also find stable, working-class families. Mostly people here are getting educated in nearby inner city schools. Families or singles usually live in this area. And this is also lower to middle class jobs. After that zone, we will find the zone of better residents. In here is newer and more spacious homes because middle class families usually live here Higher education can be achieved. Tertiary jobs can be found here. And there's also a higher standard of living among these communities. From that, one finally comes to the commuter zone. Here, smaller villages can be seen, as well as dormitory towns for commuters, which means towns built specifically to house volumes of workers for the city. Also found here, are rich people who want land as well as large, beautiful homes. Problems become evident when we apply this model to modern cities. This model also does not account for the variations in landscapes and shifting CVDs in cities, as well as gentrification. A rule of thumb to remember about the concentric circle model is that the further away you get from the CVD, the smaller the population, even though the area is closer to the CVD. The next city model we will examine is the sector model, created in 1939 by economist Homer Hoyt. This model is comprised of multiple wedge-shaped sectors, which originate from the CBD in varying lengths and widths. Running to the left of the CBD throughout the whole entire city is the transportation and industry sector. It contains the main mode of transportation in and out of the city, usually a highway with many exchanges. It also includes industrial and retailing activities located all along its length. Adjacent to the transportation sector is the low-class residential sector. This is because many of those who live in the low-class residential sector hold jobs in the transportation and industry sector. This sector grows outward in thin sections from the CBD. It also holds the worst living conditions of the whole entire city, having congested traffic, high amounts of pollution, and lots of discrimination. Filling in the areas between these sectors is the middle class residential. Here, this takes up the most model space. It also contains better homes than the low class apartments, and these residents can commute better than low class residents due to less congested sector location. The high class residential sector grows like a very thin spine from the CBD holding characteristics of the best class homes for rent as well as less pollution and traffic. Also, the further away we move from the CBD, the more expensive and grand the houses become due to newer development. The limitations of this model arise from being conceived in a time when rail transportation was not advanced and suffers the main problems of not including edge cities, which most of the people in a city live in. 
The third city model we will be looking at is the multiple nuclei theory proposed in 1945 by geographers C.D. Harris and E.L. Ullman. This is fundamentally different than the two other models we have described because while this model still has a CBD, it is made up of smaller nuclei. These nuclei or nodes would typically be in places like ports, universities, and airports. The specific districts in this model would be comprised of the CBD, which is still the major district in this model. This would also have many smaller districts around it. The next would be the wholesale slash light industrial district, which is more customer oriented. It is also nearest to the residential areas and goods that are manufactured there use little to no raw materials. Next would be the low class residential area. This would be next to the industry, also characterized with low income housing and also having a low standard of living. Next would be the industrial suburbs, which would mainly get their resources by truck and its location at the outskirts of the city would limit the pollution it creates. Preceding the industrial suburbs would be the heavy industrial district, which would be limited in its size. This usually produces heavy products like steel and oil, as well as other chemical industries commonly associated with heavy manufacturing. After the heavy manufacturing district would be the second category, the medium class residential. This is the largest part of the residential area, as most would fall into this category. The houses in this district would also be nicer than those in the low-class residential, but also less nice than those in the high-class residential. Soon after that would be the outlying business district, which would be smaller than that of the main CVD and would be clustered outside near the edge of the city. This OBD would still offer services and jobs like a CVD, just less of them. Services would include malls, airports, and colleges. After this would be the high-class residential. This is the zone where most of the elites gather, and this high-class residential area would be located along the edge of the city and is usually quiet and clean. Last is the residential suburbs. In conclusion, all of these models contribute to a greater understanding of not only how humans cluster in cities, but offers a greater understanding of why humans cluster in cities. Thank you, and we hoped you learned a lot more about urban models. Goodbye.